Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Women's World Association, here today to bring you in another exciting Black Buddhist Lectures. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice in the world, and we are the only Black Buddhist organization in the world that do not have Asian Buddhist masters. When we learn that the Asians educated all Black history, culture, and language from the Buddhist teachings, we educated them out as our teachers. Now, today we're going to bring an exciting Buddhist lecture. My lecture today is the African Christ versus the Roman Christ. There were two Christs in history. You're not going to learn this black Buddhist history from an Asian or white people. You need black Buddhist teachers. Learn your black Buddhist history. In the Anacursis, Godfrey Higgins writes about the Black Buddhist religion. And this is what he said, quote, The time has now arrived when it becomes proper to enter upon the examination of the doctrines of the celebrated Buddha of India, which were the foundations of all the mysticism of the Western nations as well as those which have which have seen of Krishna and from these two were supplied the superstitions which became engrafted into the religion of Jesus Christ. Unquote. See, this British historian writes that the foundations of all the mysticism of Western nations come from the black Buddha in India. See, what we know as the religion of Jesus Christ all comes from the religion of the Buddha. This idea that all the teachings of Christian religions come from the teachings of the Black Buddha of India is verified via archaeology, anthropology, literary science, and genetic science. Today, we want you to stop the video, go get your notes, and confirm many of the things we said. Now, let us bring this concept into a 21st century paradigm. The most difficult reality about these black Buddhist facts of history and science is that those who oppose the inclusion of the facts of black science and history the fact that we, that you, to think about the words archaeology, archaeological, anthropological, literary science, literary science, uh, connects Buddha and Christ. Recently, scientists made an important archaeological discovery that puts the Buddha back as far as 650 B.C., or before anyone had ever heard of a Jesus Christ. Certainly, the original Jesus Christ was a black man. However, archaeological evidence shows Jesus uh, as a white man in the second century AD. We're going to get to that. Now, let us discuss the one fact that white people Asians and religious experts try to keep away from the light of day. The one thing that everyone hides and keeps hidden is the Buddha or Buddha's relationship in Africa. This is the point if you keep the Buddha out of Africa, then you can hide the Buddha's relationship or the black Buddhist connection to Christian history. See, let me speak from a matter of fact. White people, black religious leaders, Asian Buddhist teachers, all keep Buddha out of Africa, and none of them would teach or share the history 
and culture of Buddhism in Africa. This is the point when you can connect Buddha and Africa is when you can connect black Buddhist history with Christian history. Now, in regards to the Abrahamic religions, that is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they do not deal with archaeology, anthropology, genetic science, literary science, nor linguistic science. Let us approach religion from the standpoint of history. Now, let us talk about the father of history whose name was Herodotus. Now, why is Herodotus the father of history? You see, Herodotus is known as the father of history because he was the first historian to collect and systematically document events and create an account. He compiled these accounts into his single major work known as, quote, the history. Now, Herodotus lived about 484 B.C. to 425 B.C. This means that Herodotus lived over 200 years after the death of the Buddha. Imagine the age of the United States of America and then something coming up over 200 years after the age of America. Of America. Things, a lot can change. Now, this white historian wrote down the black Buddhist history. Let us delve into black Buddhist history and its relationship to Africa. Now, let me explain why white people do not tell black people about black Buddhist history in Africa. It is only in the black Buddhist history that connects black people to the two Ethiopias. Now, let us be clear. White races, Asian races, and black Christian historians are not going to connect or reveal black people to the two Ethiopians. Buddhist history is black history. When you learn your black Buddhist history, you will learn the black Buddhist connection to Christian history. Now, let's kind of get into a little history. And I want you to Google some words. Now, the first word I want you to Google I want you to Google a river. Now, this river is called the Sariwati River. Now, this river dried up about 4,000 years ago. From this river emerged a black people and a culture twice as large as Egypt and Mesopotamia combined. These black people along the Sariwati River built a city so complex that the world had to wait 2,000 more years to the rise of the Roman civilization for sanitation and town planning to reach a comparable level. You see, what white people often teach is that black people grew up uneducated, uncivilized, and they didn't become civilized until white people came on the scene. But when you study the Sarawati River culture, you will learn that Africans or black people had a civilization with running bathroom, running water, toilets, a sewer system, dynamic urban planning, 2,000 years before white people even had such things. 
This civilization of the Sarawati River is also known as the Harappan culture. Now, these are two names for the civilization. It's called the Indus Valley and it's commonly known as the Harappan civilization. This is what white races try hard to prove. White races attempt to use history to support white superiority and the inferiority of black people. When you have evidence of blacks who were scientific, cultural, and for advance in science thousands of years before whites, there is silence. Now, why is the Sariwati River and the Harappan culture important? This is important because we find that this black advanced sophisticated nation in India, whereas the same black people would later come to create another civilization called the Mangada Empire. This empire was built from the people and the culture of the Harappan Empire. Now, we know the name of the founder of the Magadha Empire. His name was Sisu Naga. From Sisu Naga, we come to know a black Naga king who was a contemporary of the Buddha. His name was Bimbasara. We can empirically and absolute logical prove that there were no people known as white people in India at this point of history. Now, let us move over 200 years after the death of the Buddha and we come into written evidence of the white historian Herodotus. Herodotus wrote about both India and Africa. Now the Greeks called black people Ethiopians or burnt skin. Now, Platerus, Alexander the Great, Diogenes, Lateras, Strabo, Philos, Judeos, Titus, Flavius, Clemens, and all white historians confirm about the Buddhists and Buddhism coming to Greece, Rome, Ethiopia, Aksum, Egypt, Persia, Babylonia, Arabia, Jerusalem, and almost all of the world. You see, there are two literary statements we want to quote from Herodotus. And, and quote, quote, upon his return to Greece, they gathered around and asked, tell us about the great land of blacks called Ethiopia. And Herodotus said, quote, there are two great Ethiopian nations. One is Sin, India, and the other is Egypt. That's from Dorius, Greek historian, 100 BC. Herodotus writes about India, quote, all the tribes I mentioned, their skin are much the same color, much like the Ethiopians. Now this is from the history of Herodotus. Now, this is what British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins writes about Herodotus and Buddhists. Herodotus speaks of Nero as the cradle of the Gymnosophists or Buddhists. Higgins writes, quote, we see here that the followers of Buddha are called Gymnosophists. It has been observed that the Nero of Ethiopia was Nero. This is confirmed by the observation of Heliodorus that the priests of Nero were of a humane character and were called Gymnosophists. This humane character that he's talking about is the Christian of the brotherly love of the Buddhists. Now, when we come to Herodotus, we are over 400 years before the world 
ever heard of a re, of the religions called Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. We at this point, based on Herodotus, learned that there were two Ethiopians. Now, let us connect the two Ethiopians, India and Africa, with, with a people and a history. Before there was ever a white man to describe a black man as Ethiopian, there were black people who named themselves and they were called Kush or Kushites. Now, the kingdom of Kush was an ancient kingdom in Nubia located at the confluence of the Blue Nile, the White Nile and the River Abara, in what is now Sudan and South Sudan. We are at 400 BC in the Greek historian Herodotus writes that Miro was the crater of the gymnast office of Buddhists. Now, how do we connect the Buddhists from India to Nubians in Africa? Exactly who were the Nubians? Now, the term Kushite is a general term that refers to Nubians, Sutra, Neotes, Egyptians, Andu, Canaanites, and afro sumerian rulers of Mesopotamia. See, linguistic and archaeological evidence suggests that the Dravidian pre-scribes held to a religion that reflects proto saharian beliefs and practices. Now, let's go back to the Greeks. Now, there was an Afro-Greek writer named Homer who alluded to the diversity and unity of the Kushite empires when he wrote, quote, a race divided when the sloping rays, the rising and setting of the sun rays before Homer's time in the 8th century BC, there was a time but a vast dimension, dominion that stretched from West Africa to India, and it was dominated by rulers and priests who were ethnically Kushite. Now, this is what you must understand about the Buddhist religion. Early Buddhist practitioners, the Buddhist were Kushites. They are different names for the same people in India. They are known as Dravidian. Now, the Dravidian and the Nubian are the same people. All these people were Afro-Asian and they spoke the same language. Let me give you a point in the history. The Kushites ruled the world and in Japan they were called the Anu or the original people of Japan. They were in China. They were in Asia. They were all over the world. Now, these Japanese who teach us Nietzsche and Buddhism are not going to teach black people that the original people of Japan were Kushite or the black Anu. The one thing that whites, Asians, and blacks who are trained by white people make sure that black people do not learn is about the Buddhist religion is the fact that Buddhism from India and the Nubians of Kushites in Africa are one and the same people who spoke the same language. When Herodotus visited Nubia, or the capital of Kush, he wrote that Miro was the cradle of the Gymnosophists or the Buddhists. Now, the foundation of what later became the Christian Bible came from the Buddhists as revealed by Godfrey Higgins in his 1836 book, The Anacleptus. Before there was ever the thought of a Christian Bible, our ancestors, the black Buddhists, wrote the book of Genesis. What Christians have 
and the Bible is apocryphal writings. Now, we black Buddhists have archaeological evidence. What is not taught about Christ is the fact there were two Christs in history. There is the African Christ, which is the original Christ, and there is the Roman Christ. Let me make this very, very clear. We proud black Buddhists love, respect, and honor the African Christ. There is clearly a, a history, culture, and African background of the African Christ that has been written out of history. For those of you who would like to know the difference between the African Christ and the Roman Christ, the difference is Abraham, 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 Abraham. It is British historian Godfrey Higgins who teach us that Abraham was a Brahman and Abraham means a Brahman. And the teachings of the two Christes is the teachings of the African Christ and the white Christ was the teachings of Abraham or the Brahman. On page 256 of the Anacrypsis, Godfrey Higgins writes, quote, The real, true, conscientious Buddhists must have been in a Exact prototype of Jesus Christ as I shall prove both in doctrine and practice. Unquote. You see, the real and original Christians in world history were the black Buddhists. For the record, before any white man ever thought of being a Christian, the real and original Christians were black Buddhists. Now, on page 230 in the Anacrypsis, Godfrey Higgins writes, quote, from the origin, for the origin of the cross, we must go to the Buddhists and the Lama of Tibet. In Tibet, this cross is called a Gajuri. Now, the Af unquote, now the African cross of the Anak in ancient Egypt come from, came from the Buddhist teachings. The cross in Roman Christianity did not become official until King Constantine of Rome endorsed the cross hundreds of years after the death of Christ. Now, while the cross is the foundation of the Christian religion, the cross in Buddhism symbolized the Buddhist concept of enlightenment. It was the African Christians of Buddhists who came up with the cross. Now, please note that the word Christ in Buddha means the same thing. The word Jesus represents an individualized level of enlightenment and Christian experience. See, Christ, on the other hand, represents an appetite in the explanation of the quality of enlightenment reached by Jesus. For this reason, in the context of Western mysteries, Jesus represents the perfect mode the inner workings of the purified substance in the vehicle in which the path of awakening, the level of Christ consciousness takes place. Now, the word consciousness, now in Sirach, Messiah, and in Greek, Christos means the anointed one. As for the word Nazarene, the meaning is, quote, he who reveals what is hidden. Now, as far as the word Messiah, it has two meanings. The Christ or the anointed one and the measured one. Unquote. Now, please note 
that Jesus in Hebrew means redemption and the word Nazareth means the truth. Thus, the Nazarene means the truth. Jesus had attained Nazaretha, perfect spiritual enlightenment, and that he also taught this had to others. Hence, Jesus and his disciples were Nazarenes, or Nazarenians, meaning followers of the mystic path to God, or the Purim. The original apostles used the term Jesus the Nazarenean, Messiah, which means Jesus the Nazarenean, the Christ, the anointed one. Atone and enlightenment is one and the same word. Remember, now, his last name is Christ. The first name is Jesus. The middle name is Nazarene. Now, hence, the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth means the anointed one, the giver of truth, the bringer and the source of redemption, the revealer of what is hidden, the enlightened one, who has the gift to awaken one. The teachers of Christ and Buddha was originally based on the teachings of enlightenment. Now, there you got it. I've told you the difference between the African Christ and the Roman Christ. I am Anthony F. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. Thank you very much. With the line I see, disregard what the facts may be. Tell me, with the line I see, disregard what the facts may be. All ancient icons show a simple fact. They all show that the Buddha was black. I believe in facts and the Cato was wrong. Buddha was no Aryan. This song saw the history by those who rewrite history. Both said so that there's something to understand. It was a thousand years after Buddha's death, his teacher ride in Japan. Let me tell you something that makes sense. The Buddha's teachings did not start in the Orient. Those of you make a religious decision, the Buddha's teaching no ancient religion. The Buddha's religion has a lot of mystery. Ancient took out all the black Buddhist history. Let me lay on you the history and the facts. Look at the ancient Buddhist, statues is always right.